Hi everyone. In my previous video, we discussed about identity synchronization in from on-premises data center to cloud identities, we synchronized identities. So we have on-premises Active Directory domain services running and then on cloud, on the cloud we have Azure AD. So in order to maintain coexistence, uh, in other words, keeping Active Directory domain services running and also Azure AD with the same set of users, we can synchronize identities. So once we started synchronization, all uh, identities or users on our ADDAs, Active Directory Domain Services, will be synchronized to Azure AD. So we use a special tool or special software known as AD Connect now. Previously, there were a few other versions like DearSync, but now we are using wizard-driven AD Connect. So using this tool, we can synchronize set of users on on-premises to Azure AD. So while we continue with the wizard, it has two options. As I demonstrated in my previous video, one is fast or quick wizard, other one is custom wizard. So if you use custom wizard, there are a few options that you can select as a authentication types. So there are a few authentication types. First one is password hash authentication, password hash synchronization. And then the second one is uh, federated identity synchronization. The third one is pass through authentication. So let's look at what are those authentication methods, authentication types, and also especially federated identities in this video. When you compare password hash synchronization and federated identities and pass-through authentication, there are a few interesting facts that you can uh, see. Mainly, password hash synchronization is the easiest to set up. Let's go through quick wizard of AD Connect. It will use password hash synchronization. What it does is, whenever synchronization is completed and whenever a user tries to authenticate himself using Azure AD, it will be requesting passwords hash from the ADDS, Active Directory Domain Services. Then ADDS would retrieve hash for the particular user and encrypted and send it back to Active Directory, uh, Azure Active Directory. So then Azure Active Directory perform comparison between these two hashes. And then when the hashes are matching, user will be given access. But theoretically, when you send password hash out of your organization, out of your premises, can be vulnerable. So as a proof of concept, IT security professionals would not allow or happy about this situation. So if your organization is having very tight security policies, you wouldn't want to implement password hash synchronization. So then we have two options. One is federated identities. Other one is PTA, pass through authentication. So relatively PTA introduced quite recently. So because of that, previously what we had was only federated identity synchronization. Now, when you use federated identity synchronization, that is a nice scenario where you have service provider and identity provider. So I can give you an example. This is my example. I'm just going to access this website, script.com. And then this is the service provider where I'm going to access this to read some books. Uh, if you look at sign in options, there are a few options available. One is you can sign up and you can sign up use with, with script and you can log in uh, using your email address. And there are a few other options like facebook.com and continue with Google. But Google or Facebook has nothing to do with script. But if you look, connect, click on Google or Facebook, it will be redirected to this account or Google account. And then if I click on my the respective account, it will ask my password. But if you provide the password here, it will be authenticated from Google and accepted by script to provide its services so that is known as claim based authentication so in this case script has nothing to do with google which means google is not sharing its credentials with script but what it does is 
using claims claims are set of statements where it can use set of attributes to authenticate this particular user identically and then uh, provide authentication status and it will be redirect here URL directly to the script so once this happens script will provide you uh, the required services so that's how uh, authentication or claim based authentication works when it comes to active directory federation there are two entities you can see here one is account partner which hosts authentication services which means it hosts usernames and passwords simply credentials and other partner is a resource partner which hosts a resource so this application is known as claims aware application where before we start this authentication mechanism we need to have federation trust between account partner or the uh, identity provider and the resource provider once you have that user can authenticate himself using federation services and active directory and then he can use this uh, trust or the authentication to access uh, services from resource partner so this is known as federation trust and federation services especially when you have multi uh, forest scenario when you have partner organization to work with then probably might have adfs active directory federation services installed in each of the uh, farm forests and then when you, con you configure federation trust between two forests then one user from one forest can authenticate from his respective forest and access resources in the other forest. So that is known as Active Directory Federation Services and it provides single sign-on capability with AD Connect and then you can use ADFS services in order to authenticate users uh, during uh, directory synchronization. So once you do that, Federation Trust will be used to authenticate users. So if you have that, there is no necessity of sharing password hashes uh, with a Azure AD. So that is the second option that we have. And the third one will be pass through authentication, where if you don't have already created ADFS services, Active Directory Federation Trusts, then the option will be pass through authentication. So the, uh, then again, it's quite, quite easy to implement. And also it doesn't need existing infrastructure or existing or additional infrastructure rather as ADFS. But if you're planning Active Directory Federation services, it needs a lot of resources, including a front-end uh, application proxies, and then you need certificate services, and you need DNS namespaces, and also certificate services. So there are a lot of stuff. <clears throat> and also since it's a authentication service, it's really critical. So depending on the number of users, you need to think of uh, DR sites and high availability capabilities as well. But PTA, pass-through authentication, the third option that we have, you don't need to have additional infrastructure or resources to implement. That just you need to install uh, agents on each and every domain controller. So you can use a uh, number of domain controllers and you can install PTA agent pass to agent pass to authentication agent then you will not have to send your hashes of the password to outside of the organization in terms of authentication or you don't need adfs kind of a additional infrastructure in place in order to perform authentication when you compare these three there is no size limit if you take password hash authentication pass through authentication or federation services there is no size, which means even small size organization or very large size organizations, uh, you can use all three. The only difference be between all these three is password hash authentication. Since password hash uh, in terms of comparing hash hashes and ADFS, Active Directory Federation services required to have additional infrastructure and uh, you know investment in order to implement and pass through authentication doesn't need that kind of infrastructure. But if you compare last two, so ADFS needs additional infrastructure, but PTA doesn't. But there is one more thing. PTA still doesn't support smart card authentication, but if you, your organization is 
high concern on our security and if they need additional layer of security by using smart cards only option still that you have is active directory federation services but other than that pta is good enough for handle uh, security as an authentication type so i hope you understand about these three so previously i explained how to synchronize uh, how to implement directory synchronization from active directory domain services to azure ad uh, in this video i took you through uh, password hash authentication active directory federation services and pass through authentication i hope this is informative and thanks for weaving hope to see you with my next episode